Ryan Ham here, and I'm going to give you a little tip on wood in particular. A lot of firearms these days are being made from uh, birch wood, and uh, birch wood is pretty easy to tell. Uh, it might be beech. Uh, anyways, it's a light colored hardwood, and, and the way it's easy to tell is the areas that are scuffed up on it are usually uh, very much lighter than the surrounding wood. Yeah, so any little chunks that are uh, uh, chipped off or uh, scratches or that kind of thing, uh, they're going to be uh, they're going to be a, a a certain color, and it, and it should be fairly obvious if you if you've seen enough of them. So what I'm going to explain here is how to um, very easily um, fix areas that are like that to make it kind of match the rest of the wood. Now um, you, you'll see. There's some sticky residue here. There's uh, almost looks like somebody has had this uh, like masking tape or duct tape or maybe it's mildew or, or who knows what. Also, you'll get marks where people have leaned it against the wall and, and there's paint and stuff like that. All that stuff comes out real easy with some uh, very fine thin wool. I think this is a, a quadruple lot or triple lot. That's a zero 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 or zero 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 zero. <laughs> uh, steel wool. And this looks kind of matted because I've actually soaked this in uh, uh, break-free CLP so many times that, uh, you know, it's looking pretty ratty. Eventually I'll retire this, but for our purposes, this is just fine. And a used um, rag uh, from cleaning whatever, I, you know, cleaning the bores of the guns, uh, you know, cleaning the slides, whatever, but it, it, it's got to be kind of Kind of used, not black, but uh, but kind of brown, and you'll see what why, why that means something. Um, let me show you that little chunk that I showed you earlier. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to rub into that stock, and that's going to discolor the the wood underneath. Um, and you're you're kind of staining it. And you know, kind of bringing out the you know the the uh, the nick without you know without having to have any special fancy anything. And you'll see that's still there. The, the nick is still there, but it's uh, it's largely been covered up by the uh, the color, the dark colors that are that you're already using to clean your guns and if that's not enough you know you go back to the receiver uh, I haven't cleaned this one so go back to the receiver and get some more and largely darken now and that's still the ding is still there but uh, you can see the shine is also matching because what you've done is You've taken an oil and put it onto uh, an oiled varnish finish. So that's just like oiling your furniture or, or your stocks. That uh, area of, uh, of gunk there, very lightly with the steel wool, we'll take that out. Now it'll also go down into the, the wood itself. Well, don't, don't matter, steel wool is, is actually really a good polishing compound. And then when you go back over it with the oil, you see all of that sticky residue. Well, maybe not all of it, but the majority of it is gone. I, I can go back over that again. And it works on all your little dings. Go over it with the rag first. If that doesn't take it off, and that did there, uh, then go back over it with the, the steel wool. So we'll, we got a few marks on here. Let's go at those. I'm going to just start with the steel wool because I know it's it's not going to come off with just the rag. Right, now I'm going to try and do it with the grain. I'm doing it against the grain to start with, but try and do it with the grain as much as possible. And the grain is going this way on the wood. Oh, almost always in a buttstock it'll be. I didn't set this up. I just, I mean, I bought a, a beat up old used gun. And a lot of people won't know how to clean it up or, or really won't care. But there's no mechanical issues with the gun. There's, uh, you know, there's cosmetic issues. 
but uh, those can be cleaned up with a little bit of steel wool and uh, a little bit of uh, oil. You can use different types of oil. You can use actual stock finishing oil, but I figure I'm going to clean the gun with brake free anyways. I've already got it out. Okay, so there's the bulk of the gunk that was on there. And that was, uh, I don't know what that was. It was feeling like it was some sort of paint or maybe a sticky residue from, uh, from um, some tape somebody had. Who knows? If you take the butt pad off, just be careful not to soak it into the end grain too much. It looks it looks kind of funky if you do that. But um, all of that is gone. The wood looks beautiful, and all we're using is break free CLP. Uh, get the CLP. Uh, there's also a lubricant and protect in, and just a protect in, and you know they have a gun collector. They got all all different kinds, but the cleaner lubricant and protectant has the solvents in order to dissolve all the all that gunk that you need and the lubricant is what's going to give it that shine and kind of soak into the the wood a little bit uh, yeah after you've let it soak in a while you can you can wipe it down and uh, get, get give you more of a satin sheen but you saw what that looked like originally i mean that's just a couple of minutes it doesn't take much at all uh, I'll, I'll go and do the stocks on most of my guns um, that way before I uh, before I put them away after you know after shooting them or you know after hunting season or or uh, just every once in a while if I haven't gotten gotten a gun out and shot it in a while I I like to do that so if you do go through the the finish and it, it's just a stain on here if you do go through the finish with the steel wool you're doing it wrong uh, if you have to like if there's some some particularly built up areas if you have to go through the finish uh, into the wood itself and dig down into the wood any, you'll uh, you'll find that you can you can even out the finish so much with the break free that you might not even want to worry about uh, refinishing after you're done. Um, this is well, you saw what it looked like originally, and uh, I would have no problems uh, going to the <laughs> going to the gun club and uh, and shooting a couple rounds of skeet with a with a gun that looks like this, whereas before it, it really looked like I abused the gun. Well, I didn't. It wasn't my gun to begin with. I just bought it used recently. But uh, now I'm using the steel wool because it's got a little darker gunk in it. I, you can see where it wears around the edge. It, it gets it gets lighter because the wood underneath is really light. Uh, but if you if you touch it up and kind of use it like a stain. Just uh, again, just the the stuff from cleaning your guns, then uh, you're going to end up with the the wood that kind of matches, and it's not really as obvious that you couldn't afford <laughs> walnut or or a uh, hand rubbed uh, <laughs> uh, stock system. You can use teak oil. You can use um, uh, you can use uh, uh, was it tongue oil, teak oil, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, or any mix thereof. Those are drying oils. Uh, which means that they dry hard. I don't like using those uh, because, you know, I, I, I do if I refinish a stock entirely, uh, but I don't like using those just for maintenance because for the most part, the maintenance uh, uh, is, is going to be just fine with this system. Um, you'll see, if you see anything else, don't point it out in the video. I'm going to go over the stock again uh, in, when I don't have a camera in front of me, but... Uh, there you go. If, if you like this video, if you like other videos, uh, subscribe, um, like, uh, recommend it to your friends, uh, favorite, uh, whatever you have to do. Uh, you know, I don't do this. Um, I don't do this for free. It, it, it does cost some money to, and some time to, to do these videos. But I really appreciate you watching. Thank you. It's Ryan Ham. Bye.